All right. Well, actually, I wanted to get some uh, input from a member of our audience as we're talking about sustainable food systems. So we have Aditi Mukherjee, who's the Director for Climate Change Adaptation and Mitigation Impact Action Platform at CGIAR. Um, Aditi, I would love to hear from you. What do you think is the biggest challenge to creating a sustainable food system? Um, hi, this is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity for asking the question and a comment. I think the previous speaker just hit it very correctly that climate change, climate crisis is one of those that is really hitting food security. And the recent IPCC uh, report of which I was a part actually shows that our food increase in productivity has actually slowed down over the last 50 years. And CGIR as an organization has in the past, um, I think uh, we are again that organization that Bill Gates talks about that many of us don't know, but has done remarkable work. So we had a history of contributing to food production in some of the poorest parts of the world. From where I come from, from South Asia, it was CG's work that led, led to Green Revolution. But those are the kind of avenues where you could actually increase food production as becoming increasingly constrained due to climate change. And that's where I think our real challenge lies. How do we, how do farmers adapt to the changing climate? And how do they keep growing the food that they need to feed themselves? And we at the CG are working on various solutions, technologies, and I think many of the speakers have talked about a lot of those innovations. One thing I don't hear enough about, and I thought I'll I'll talk about it, is not about the global south, though. One of the reasons, the, the we are not doing enough to hit at the root cause of climate change. So we can invest billions and billions of dollars in capacity building of the smallholder farmers, and we need to do that because only 2% of the global funds actually go to smallholder farmers. But even then, if greenhouse gas emissions do not stop, they do not reverse, as much as we actually build up, I mean, the, the science is clear that all the adaptation will not work in a warmer world. And we are on a trajectory to a three degree warmer world by the end of the century. So I would actually want gatherings like this to also bring the focus back on what are the rich countries doing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions because unless that happens a lot of our investments that are now going to the global south as it rightfully should will not be as effective because in a warmer world i mean when when temperatures hit 50 degrees no amount of wheat breeding which we do would be able to actually help farmers grow their wheat so i think there is a big conversation around what can those who have emitted the most historically can do to prevent this crisis? And that does not take away the need for finance and the technology support that the smallholder farmers need, but they would only succeed so far without that, the big solution coming into place. So thank yeah, you. Thank you, excellent points. Thank you, Aditi. Well, to continue the discussion of uh, supporting smallholder farmers, I would like to welcome to the stage Peter Laharn, who is the CEO of the Conrad and Hilton Foundation, and Matt Forte is the Managing Director for One Acre Fund USA. So thank you both. Yeah, I can sit right here. So, Matt, you, um, One Acre Fund, which just recently awarded the 2023 Hilton Humanitarian Prize, um, some might call that the you know, Nobel Prize of the humanitarian world, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your approach, and you've probably have heard some of the speakers before talk about supporting smallholder farmers, and what is your approach to working with them? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thanks for having us today, and, and thanks to Peter and the Hilton Foundation for this prize. And, and for us, it's not just a recognition of an organization, it's the recognition of the four million farm families that we serve who toil each day in the field from dawn to dusk to provide for their families, their communities, and who sit really at the center of all the global challenges we've been discussing today. Um, so, you know, One Acre was founded out of the, you know, what I call the tragic irony that the vast majority of the world's hungry are farmers. Right. Say it again. The vast majority of the world's hungry are farmers. That doesn't make sense. Most farmers in Africa have enough land. They have secure enough land to be able to feed their families year round. And so our approach basically is to is to make available all the products and services that farmers need to be able to grow more food and safely store that food. That's things like quality inputs, finance, training, 
safe storage access to markets. Um, we do that in groups of farmers. We do it in very remote villages uh, throughout East and Southern Africa. And, you know, we do it in a way that I think kind of is, is co-developed with farmers. They are uh, the local experts um, that we rely on to ensure that what we do is actually going to work. So that's one acre fund. Great. And Peter, so the Hilton Foundation, you all have been um, really driving and pushing a lot of this conversation around localization. We've been talking about that a lot the past couple of days. You definitely hear that, um, you know, from buzzword to <laughs> actual action. Um, I'd love to hear about how that framing is um, part of your thought process in awarding this prize and in selecting one acre fund and focusing on smallholder, smallholder farmers. Super, thanks Kate. And I would first say, kind of geeking out, it is terrific to be here with DevX and to see the journalists that, that we read every day interviewing people. This is really- this They will awesome. sign autographs later. Yeah, okay, <laughs> super. And then I, a, a disclaimer, uh, although the, the Hilton Foundation is the the proud brand behind the prize, we do not make the prize selection. It's, it's an independent jury composed of, of folks whose names you would know, uh, former heads of states, former heads of uh, multilateral organizations, activists, et cetera. Uh, so every year I kind of uh, just kind of uh, hold my breath and say, who is coming? Uh, but it is always a, a tremendous lift and a, a tremendous opportunity. I, I look at my role in the year after the prize as promoting the organization, opening doors for them, and explaining to people who may not know them uh, why they are such an awesome organization. In this particular case, you know, I think uh, not only, uh, as Matt said, One Acre Fund pays real serious attention to farmers themselves and, and what they think, as, as he said, the, the population most exposed to climate stresses uh, and, and indeed most depended on for, for the, the well-being of and, and nutritional security of the population of Africa. Um, also, I, I think they, uh, they have gone from something that was a kernel of an idea to something that is uh, at scale, but further scalable. Uh, something, and something that I think is very uh, rurally located. Uh, I, I, my, Rwanda is my country-in-law. I'm there every uh, every year. I've been all over the country, and I have never been to the marketing town in which they are headquartered <laughs> as a, a, a as a, a gauge of their locality. But I think the, it's a springboard as well. Uh, what, one of the things that really impresses me about One Acre Fund is that they basically have a game plan bigger than their own footprint, but for helping all 50 million. Uh, smallholder uh, farmers and uh, farmer families in Africa. They have it all mapped out. They know who can help or who can power it really. Uh, and, and, and the ideas are, are very available. So we're, we're quite pleased with them as a, okay. as a laureate. And as Aditi said before, uh, you know, climate is obviously the big uh, threat to farmers. Um, Obviously, there is a big need to address the big farmers. But how are you thinking about supporting smallholder farmers while also protecting the environment? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I like to say that in our first decade, we were almost fully focused on productivity. How do you solve the problem of inadequate food? You know, having now lived through the last six, seven years of these, just, you know, one crisis after another, uh, inflation, COVID, currency, uh, weather, pests, and so forth, we began to realize resilience has to be built into everything we do. And so what we're doing is we're constantly looking for win-win programs and opportunities with farmers that are both poverty alleviating and, and climate resilient. You know, one good example of this is, is tree planting. Trees uh, are a great way to build assets uh, for a family. A, a timber tree costs in a rural area something like five to 10 cents to, to develop, and then they can make seven to $10 when they reach their sort of growth uh, peak. Um, but they're also incredibly important uh, for, for protecting the forest surrounding farmers' lands, enriching the soils, sequestering carbon, and, and other ecosystem services. So, you know, we have a, a commitment to plant or to help farmers plant on their own lands one billion trees by 2030. That's a great example of it's going to help economically, but it's also going to help uh, with, with, with adaptation and resilience to, to the changing climate. Right. And Peter, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you think prize philanthropy can really be a, a catalyst for driving impact with solutions and ideas like this. 
you know, I, I think it's one, it allows us to uh, come into contact with a whole range of organizations that we would not necessarily know. Uh, we get hundreds of, of applications and nominations. I think that's true in every prize competition. Uh, and we're trying to expand that that funnel. So all of you, if you if you have nonprofits you deeply believe in, please do look at HiltonFoundation.org and nominate. Uh, I think it also allows us, it, it, it gives a grant that is entirely unrestricted, uh, in our case of two and a half million dollars, to use in whatever way helps an organization get to the next level. And it's been used in a whole variety of ways, all of which are uh, strengthening to the organization. Uh, and I think uh, a lasting uh, advantage is that it opens doors. Now, One Acre Fund is well known. I, I venture to say probably most of you know them already. Uh, so what is, the, what is the next level? An organization that has a $240 million budget and is, is in the, uh, the top 50 non or internationally operating nonprofits in the world, according to DevEx, uh, um, you know, I like citing your sources. There right? we go. Uh, I, I think the question is, how can you help the rest of the funding world, starting with IFAD, who was just up here, uh, all the multilateral development banks, private capital, et cetera, be attracted in that direction? You heard from the uh, the president of IFAD how lamentably low the capital is for uh, for for agricultural. Um, destinations and and we want to really work on that this year and then one cool thing we're trying to do is make sure that it, there's lasting value from the prize so every year that a laureate becomes a prize member we have a, a leadership institute that continues 10 20 50 years in the future they'll have a cohort of leaders developed in that and it will be transversal across 30 organizations that have received the prize so we, we try to keep on giving over the years Great. Well, I know that you have the um, symposium prize ceremony coming up October 26. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be a fun festivity, but also be live streamed. So if anyone wants right. to to join in, and you know, DevX, we've uh, had a long term partnership with Hilton Foundation. We really valued the work that we've been able to do with you. And Indeed. so if anyone's interested in checking that out, um, please you can visit the HiltonFoundation.org backslash news. Any other last plug here, Peter? Uh, just I I uh, for you. I think DevX has been so important at getting the world's eyeballs on, uh, and especially the eyeballs of the development uh, profession uh, on, on priorities, on, on crises, and on possibilities. So uh, we're very happy for that partnership and really happy to be working with One Acre Fund. All right. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.